and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And by the time you see this, you may know more about what's going on in Illinois than we do because there it's been down to the wire this week about whether they're going to get marriage equality or not. Uh, the wave of anti-gay violence is continuing in New York City. We're not happy to report. Ann and I uh, will look at the halfway measure taken by the Boy Scouts protecting gay scouts but oh. not gay scout masters or staff. Uh, yeah, uh, very mixed opinions about that one. Uh, but not about Nevada, where the legislature has voted to repeal its constitutional amendment against marriage equality and to open marriage to gay couples, but it has to go through several more steps, so it's going to take a few more years before it happens. Uh, Puerto Rico has enacted LGBT rights legislation. And you know that 18-year-old girl in Florida who was arrested for having a sexual relations with a younger girlfriend, 14, 15, conflicting stories? Well, she may have a legal out, but first, she's not taking the plea deal the prosecutors have offered. Uh, the, the first out gay man to play a major professional sport in America has taken the field to a standing ovation. Very heartwarming. Uh, on the other hand, there was a massive uh, anti-gay demonstration against uh, marriage equality and gay rights in both Paris and Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and in Moscow, uh, pride marchers there were attacked and arrested. We have video and some uh, very disturbing photos. One small bright light in Kiev, Russia, or Kiev, Ukraine. Yes. Uh, pride marchers defied a court order and scored a historic little breakthrough. And hundreds marched for marriage equality in Croatia. Andy will review a new gay-themed play off-Broadway, Moonlight and Love Songs, with our guest last week, Gerald McCulloch, and the classic stage company's revival of Brack's uh, Caucasian Chalk Circle, starring Christopher Lloyd. And uh, we uh, were both astonished by the HBO Liberace movie, Behind the Candelabra, <laughs> and we'll talk all about it. I want to know who did that piano play. It what do you mean? It was Michael Douglas well, all I mean, the way. Means, I mean, <laughs> in, in, you know, in old movies, yeah. uh, you know, they, they always had a, they, they had to hide the hands, yeah. or you just had a hand shot yeah. with a pianist. Yeah. This one with the CGI was quite amazing. It really it was. It was amazing in many ways. The whole thing was amazing. Okay. But we start off uh, in Illinois, yeah. uh, again, where this is this is the deadline week about whether they can uh, pass same-sex marriage. It's uh, it already passed in one house, has to pass in the other house, uh, it has to pass in the house, actually. Having passed in the Senate. Right. So, uh, you know. And this week is the deadline. Friday is the deadline, uh, which may already have passed by the time you see this. So we're not sure, as we tape on Wednesday afternoon, what's going to happen, except that uh, our side is promising a vote this week before the deadline. 99% uh, sure there will be a vote. Uh, it's possible that couldn't happen, too. But, but the all vote the is, stars had to align. Uh, the stars have to align to give us the 60 votes we need out of a, legis a house of 118 people, because we right. need a majority. And uh, no one knows. No one right. knows. They, they say they wouldn't bring it up if they didn't have the votes, but people's counts are very, very close. Right. So... You tell us what happens in Illinois. But we do know what happened in, in, in Nevada. Uh, the Assembly followed the Senate in passing a repeal to the constitutional ban on same-sex marriage, uh, replacing it with marriage equality, all right. in one package. This has to pass the next session of the legislature in before, 2015. It, before it can go to the voters. Yeah. They, the Nevada legislature, like several other states meets only every other year. So it has passed the legislature in 2013. It must pass again when they meet again in 2015. 
Then in 2016, it would go on the ballot for the voters. That actually is kind of a good idea. Don't meet so often, less <laughs> mischief. Well, that's certainly the rationale. Molly Ivins said setting not, up that neither system. man, woman, or child is safe while the Texas legislature is in session. And a little activism going on in Michigan, which has a very, very harsh uh, constitutional amendment state. Uh, constitutional amendment against not only marriage but basically any two gay people talking to each other anywhere. <laughs> uh, we would not be able to do this show there. Exactly. Even uh, if we're of different sexes. We exaggerate. But well, it's, it's bad. And it's, it's, it's really cut, bad. It's cut down on domestic partner benefits at the university. It's, yeah. a, it's a disgrace. Well, they have a very active American Family Association chapter there that really is just like a dog with a bone about going after us every chance they get. But uh, things are changing in, Ma in Michigan, and a number of local uh, towns and cities have passed non-discrimination ordinances. Yeah. And now a gay male couple who got married, obviously, somewhere else, have had their marriage license accepted by a register of deeds in, in a town there. Ingham. Ingham. Uh, for the purpose Ingham. of uh, proof of joint custody of their house. And this means that they're automatically entitled to inherit the house from each other. Yeah. Now, now they have the wills. <laughs> uh, this system is supposed to be for people who die in test state with no wills. They have wills, but they're also not sure that's going to be recognized by the state. A will? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. You know how families come in what? and grab stuff. Uh, uh, you can. Uh, wait a minute. Let's not let's not send bad messages out okay. here. You can write an airtight will. Anybody can challenge your will. I mean, yes. certainly your family members can come in and challenge your will. That's why if you don't like them, it's better to say, I don't like them, and they're not getting anything, and I'm saying it in here. Seriously. Uh, so, uh, you know, fine. These no, are, these but are, as you say, anyone anybody could can challenge, challenge it. Anybody can challenge so it. So this is a backup plan to have the register of deeds, uh, have the marriage license as proof of their joint custody of the house. Now, technically, under the state constitutional amendment, the register of deeds is probably not supposed to look at this as proof. And certainly the AFA will be right in there challenging this, but the gay couple and others of their ilk uh, are pursuing a lot of strategies like this to try to bring these issues to the fore. And lay the and, groundwork uh, for a legal challenge yeah. to this very evil constitutional amendment. Exactly. But things got better in Colorado. Mm -hmm. We have a picture here of the House Speaker, Mark uh, Ferrandino. He's there, well, if we can, yeah, he's yes. there on the right. Yep. He entered into a civil union, which is all they can have in Colorado until they get rid of their anti-marriage amendment, with his partner, Greg Wirch, at the Capitol, and it was presided over by Monica Marquez, the out lesbian on the state Supreme Court. Congratulations, everybody. Exactly. Now, uh, we've been following the fight over including binational couples in the proposed immigration reform. Jonathan Lewis, who is one of the uh, most affluent and most generous uh, gay donors in the community, to particularly to Democrats and political causes. Although he's not happy with Obama. Well, that's the point. He, he wrote an editorial on Huffington Post about how angry he is about this and, and about the lack of an executive order covering uh, employees uh, of contractors who uh, work with the federal government. And so he is withholding his donations, and he's being quite public about it, and he's advising others to do the same. Well, the White House reception for uh, the LGBT reception, the Pride reception, is, I think, June the 13th. Usually the president saves up a little announcement before that. Maybe he'll come up with something. Well, he needs to. He likes to, to space it out, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but we've waited for that stuff before. I know. Uh, but here's why. Well, yes. Here's a great example of why he needs to. Because once again, for the 9,000th year in a row, the ExxonMobil shareholders have yes. rejected a proposed shareholder amendment uh, to add a non discrimination clause, in the, which includes sexual orientation and gender identity and expression, to the ExxonMobil human rights rules or whatever, and uh, 81 to 19 percent this year. But ExxonMobil, of course, like most major corporations, is a contractor with the federal government. And if yes. Obama issued an executive order uh, mandating that 
companies that do business with the federal government must have uh, non-discrimination uh, regulations and abide by them, then ExxonMobil would be forced to yes. put this in place. This was brought by the New York State Con Comptroller, uh, DiNapoli. Uh, Tom, Tom DiNapoli? Yes, yes. Tom DiNapoli. Um, but for many years before that by every other yes. controller. Now, an executive with ExxonMobil in Belgium, where ExxonMobil had to provide the benefits because people could get uh, yeah, they do it in there, other places in the world. Refuse to transfer to Texas where they do not provide the yeah. benefits. Yeah, ExxonMobil, these hypocrites, say, uh, you know, no, we don't need to do it. But they are doing it in other places in the world. It's like uh, Cardinal Dolan in the Archdiocese of New York, which well, it turns out is paying for contraceptives and abortions in their health insurance coverage in New York, even though they fight it tooth and nail. People, people need to know about this because this was the week that uh, from every pulpit they were supposed to preach about religious liberty and how Catholics are under assault and they're going to force us to pay for contraception against our religion and we just want to cry. But they, the Times did this expose on the Archdiocese and they found out that, they, that under one of their union plans they mm -hmm. had agreed to this. So they were doing it. For 10 years. What a bunch of hypocrites. Exactly. You know, it's just outrageous. Now, uh, uh, Well, the other uh, little instance of Cardinal Dolan being a hypocrite is his... Uh, uh, there are all these violent attacks on gay people in New York lately, gay men in particular. And uh, uh, all the progressives speak out against this, but uh, the right-wingers, you know, they're the ones whose rhetoric is, we think, promoting this directly or indirectly. So we got some of the worst ones to make statements condemning yes. it. Yes. Fam American Family Association. And now no, no, the Family Research, Research Council and, and the now. National Organization for Marriage. Yes. So some people have been going after Cardinal Dolan and the Catholic Church, and he goes on his regular Sirius XM Catholic Channel radio show and says for 19 seconds, all of these... Uh, it offends oh, justice, yeah, uh, the Lord. Yeah. Well, da, 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 if you beat up... Well, here's what I want from them, because they keep saying, everybody deserves dignity, everybody deserves respect. respect. Would you please be explicit about what you're for in terms of us? What you're for? Not just that we're allowed to breathe... That the is all they're for. Well, that's not enough. I mean, they've got to get... <laughs> well, they, I think they've been quite explicit. Well, they were. Uh, they did, um, on the Boy Scouts, they acceded to this uh, new policy. Maybe we should uh, well, yes, talk about Well, yes, and that's that. very interesting. Uh, what they have, uh, both they and the Mormons, have not spoken up about uh, in any opposition to the new Boy Scout policy. What happened was the Boy Scout National Council meeting in Dallas last week uh, a body of 1,400 leaders from across the country voted uh, 61 to 38 percent to allow, uh, uh, to not uh, oust any scout because of his sexual orientation. Well, it reminds me a little bit of the way they sort of treat it in the schools, for instance. You know, they, you know a, a child, uh, you know, who has, they don't blame the children kind of a thing. You know, you, you, uh, you know, they, they don't, uh, generally throw kids out, uh, but they, you know, they uh, they do go after staff, and they don't, you know, they don't want gay people teaching the, in the in the Catholic schools. And what happens here, and and what people are still so upset about, is that they have refused to change their policy on scout masters, troop leaders, uh, uh, pack leaders. That any adult who is out, including. Jennifer Terrell, a lesbian mother of uh, kids in Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, uh, that they cannot serve as They should uh, only leaders. have lesbian scout masters. <laughs> that would, if they're, yes. interest, if, yes, if, they if, if they're into some perverted theory of they child would do safety. Better. They'd do better at teaching uh, crafts and camping anyway. Absolutely, we're not, <laughs> we're drifting into stereotypes here, but some of them are true. But there's a very mixed reaction in the LGBT community about this, and the, the war has been raging online this last week because some people want to take the glass half full uh, approach and say, look, this is a step forward to allow the scouts themselves to be out and gay, and we've got to see this as a process and a move in the right direction, and, and, we, and we should appreciate that. And the other side says, don't be ridiculous. All this is doing is encoding 
the idea that adult gay people are predators and what's going to happen to these poor kids when they, they're yeah. out but they get to be 18 and suddenly they're not welcome I mean, to be involved with the Why would an out gay kid, kid want to be a part of an organization like this? Well, because they're now welcomed as a kid. No, but they're into an organization that says that gay people uh, adults are a danger to you. Well, I'm saying this is the debate. Some people want to uh, emphasize the positive of the kids being okay, and others I, want to emphasize the uh, the exclusion still of the adults. I don't imagine they changed the thing about atheists, did they? You still got to swear not. to God, Absolutely. even though the Holy Father was opening the door for atheists a little bit this week, and then kind of the Vatican shut it. You might also say that the lack of response from the right wing on this at all? Well, on the pretty much. Well, come on. The Times uh, did a did a, a piece about a, a parents who were going to pull their kids oh, out of this thing uh, right parents, away. Parents, yes, but I'm saying the institutions of the Mormon Church and the Catholic Church, which are the majority yes, of are. sponsors of troops, but the evangelicals have remained silent. The evangelicals have not remained silent. Okay, and those are the ones who are pulling people out, and they're you know it is so. Uh, disheartening to read, like a mom, you know, with five boys and the scout saying she's going to take them all out. And she's not like angry, she's a, you know, nice person, but this is just unacceptable to be among homosexuals. And it's just, this is the thing that you get so uh, bent out of shape over. Or, well, all right, I'll do the glass half full on this. Uh, if they leave, it's a bigger vote for changing the adult policy because they've segregated themselves. And some scout troops are already saying that they are going to welcome. Uh, Notably, the Connecticut Yankee Council. They said no matter what the nationals do, we're gonna accept gay leaders. And Greenwich, Connecticut, and the Greater New York Council, and uh, U.S. Education Secretary Arne Duncan, well, does, and the President. Well, are they going to be deinstitutionalized? Are I they going to be cut that. off? No, I but mean, here's that's what, the thing. Uh, that's what happened before. Uh, they, yeah, they but here's what's important. The United States Supreme Court upheld the right of the Boy Scouts to have a, a bigoted policy yes. on the grounds that, that was intrinsic to their beliefs. Right. Now, since they have said it's okay to have out gay scouts, they have undermined their oh. own rationale, and people are going to, uh, in addition to rogue troops, you're going to have people going into court and saying, that is no, clearly no longer part of their intrinsic rationale, and therefore you cannot uphold this bifurcated system. Uh, there's a precedent for this in the Supreme Court in a very famous golf case, as you know. <laughs> there was a disabled player named Casey Martin who couldn't finish a round of golf, and he was a pro, unless he had a cart to go between the shots. He could get up and make the, sh make the swing. and. Every, all Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, they're all saying walking is intrinsic to the game. But then the Supreme Court heard evidence that you've got all these tournaments where you do let people use cards. Uh, senior tournaments, it's not, doesn't seem to be always. So they ruled in his favor and he was allowed to take a cart over the objections of the governing bodies. Well, soon you may have Boy Scout leaders in carts. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's turn uh, or uh, keep talking about politics. Uh, and is the right wing continuing to self-destruct? Look Whoa. what they've done in Virginia. Well, they nominated in their convention in Virginia. The Republican Party. Republican Party. Uh, a guy named E.W. Jackson uh, for lieutenant governor. Now, he's even more anti-gay than the gubernatorial candidate. You've got a picture of him there. Yeah. He, he's even more anti-gay than the gubernatorial candidate, Ken Cuccinelli, who was one of the most anti-gay politicians we've ever run across. Than whom we thought no one could Jackson be more Jackson says gay folks are, quote, very sick people psychologically, mentally, and emotionally. He calls us, quote, perverted. And he compares homosexuality to pedophilia. He also compares Planned Parenthood to the Klan, and says Obama has a Muslim worldview. Well, well he says maybe. Planned Parenthood is worse than the Klan. Oh, it I has see. killed more black people oh, than the Klan. No, so even Republican strategist Ari Fleischer said that Jackson's, quote, anti-gay views are indefensible. He, of course, you know, was the spokesperson for George yeah, W. Bush blah, when he was blah, trying blah. to ban us in the Constitution. But let me say something. This is an off-year election, and this guy Jackson 
could win. Folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again now until 20, uh, you know, 14. You got to vote in off your elections. You got a lot more power then than you had in 2012. You've got to do it. I assume they're running as a ticket and you have to vote for uh, uh, both of them. I, do I don't not think know. he can be elected I, uh, independently. I do not know. Uh, I hope he's. I hope it's a ticket, and I hope it drags them down. Well, it's expected to because uh, what's his name, the the uh, former head of the DNC and Clinton big fundraiser and friend, is the Democratic candidate or will be. But you won't be able to vote for Michelle Bachman in 2014, <laughs> at least for Congress. <laughs> she is going to retire. She said it had nothing to do with the ethics <laughs> investigation or uh, into her 2012 or the fact campaign. That I couldn't get reelected. <laughs> she, to quote a television title, she said, eight is enough." <laughs> yeah, but here's the here's the little twist that reveals uh, Michelle's real fears and agenda. She was already running campaign commercials for her reelection. <laughs> which is an indication that she the jig is up up until last night at midnight when she posted the video I'm sure she was planning to run I'm sure her God had a talk with her yeah. and her lawyer yeah and said, and said go back over. to working with uh, what's his name on uh, curing the gays now wait a minute we have some good news that we can give people come on <laughs> yeah uh, in Pennsylvania Pittston became the 32nd municipality in the state of Pennsylvania to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity and the first in Luzerne County. It's about midway between Scranton and Wilkes Barre. Northeast. Bar. Yeah. Wilkes-Barre. Barry. Wilkes-Barre. Uh, and in Puerto Rico, the uh, Puerto Rico House has passed a very broad sexual orientation uh, non-discrimination, uh, gender identity to non-discrimination bill, and a uh, and an inclusion of uh, these categories in domestic violence cases. Uh, the Senate has to repass uh, some of this because it's been changed a little. But and Governor Alejandro Garcia Padilla has vowed to sign it, and this is a big change in Puerto Rico. Well, they changed the governor, and they changed the mayor of San Juan, and the politics are different, and therefore this stuff is getting through now. And, and that's the, and why the, it is important to vote in elections. Yeah, every election. Yeah. Every election. Uh, and uh, we, looking at the U.S. Congress, uh, Senator Harkin, who is in charge of this, says that he will bring up the Employment Non-Discrimination Act for consideration after July 4th. Well, shouldn't that Don't like pass overwhelmingly? I mean, you already have a majority in favor of uh, same-sex marriage there. Is this harder to do? I never, they can't I, pass anything. I don't know. Anything. Well, well come on. We got it. We got in in the Violence Against Women Act. Yeah. Well, we did. Yes. That after, was the first time we were ever a, a, protected in anything. After it was defeated, oh. Protected in anything. I'm the one who's usually telling you that. Okay. Uh, let's go to Florida and poor Caitlin Hunt and her girlfriend. Well, an uh, interesting case because, you know, this is the case of the, the young woman, she's 18 now, who had this younger girlfriend who was 14 when they got started and 15 now. Uh, where the parents of the younger uh, girl waited until she turned 18 and then had her arrested for lewd and lascivious and everything else. And, you know, this could make her a sex offender. Now, she apparently has been offered a deal where she would not be have to be a registered sex offender, but, but she's she, not taken any plea deals. Well, she wouldn't uh, have to be registered as a sex offender, but she would have to be pleading guilty to being a child abuser, right. which amounts to the same thing. So that would be on her record, and it would act as if she were a now, registered her, sex her, offender. Her parents, Caitlin's parents, uh, Hunt, uh, her parents asked it to be reduced to a misdemeanor, but the prosecutors re refused. Now, I read up, as I mentioned, the Romeo and Juliet laws. Romeo and Juliet laws were when, when, a, when a couple is within a certain number of years, uh, then there's no crime. Uh, in Florida, for heterosexuals... Even though one is a minor and one is not. Right. Uh, in Florida, uh, if, if there's if less than four years between the couple, and that's true in this case, and the younger one is older than 14, uh, they do have a Romeo and Juliet law. There is no crime. 
Uh, so I don't see, I mean, it, it was written for heterosexuals. It ought to be the same for these two. The Supreme Court of the United States overturned the Kansas conviction of a, of a guy who was put away for this yeah. several years ago because he was gay, and, the, and if he had been heterosexual, he would, wouldn't have had a crime. So right. uh, I, you know, I don't know why that hasn't come up much more in this case. Well, but. there's a lot more to be done here, and the fact that it's gotten so much publicity and she has gotten so much support has led a state senator in Florida to start talking talking about passing a more forgiving law that would take uh, uh, reality into consideration. Yeah. Because people point out, look, these kids are in school together, these girls were on the basketball team together. It is, uh, people get involved with each other. and. Uh, you have to judge individual cases and well but the, but, the, but it, these are bright what I what are called bright line laws yes if you cross the line and you have to know these things everybody read up on the age of consent in your state if you're a young person and you just turned 18 or something like that read up on the age of consent laws and what you could be liable to because no matter how much you love somebody you better stay away from them sexually if uh, there's a possibility of you being uh, put away for a long time uh, for child abuse now, the people who maybe should be put away, or at least punished in some way, are the gay bashers who yes. keep up the attacks. And we now have heard about one more case in New York uh, like of an attack on a, a activist. In the, yes, in the month. In the month. Uh, is... Eugene Lewandowski, a member of Queer Rising, an activist group here in New York City, he was attacked by nine or ten teenagers in Hell's Kitchen in the 50s on Ninth Avenue. Shouting anti-gay slurs. Yeah. Uh, and again, if anything, if you see anything like this, if anything like this happens to you, uh, certainly you want to call the police and you want to call the Anti-Violence Project. Uh, you can reach them uh, by email at avp.org. That's their website. Or call 212 Seven one four one one four one. The Anti Violence Project. Now, the Anti Violence Project is doing like Friday nights out to yeah. give, Go people, to give people information. I think it's got to be every night out. Well, I think it's got to be every day in school, right. uh, starting in kindergarten, that we teach people uh, to respect each other. Right, and and, not, and, and that attacking people violently is, is a not, crime. Yeah. It's not a public service, and as some of polite, them think. Not not courteous. Well, there's another thing you can do, and this thing came out of Belgium, but it's already in New York, and anybody, I guess anybody can use it anywhere. It's a it's an app to fight anti-gay violence. It's called it's a it's a, it's called a bashing app, and the website is uh, www.bashing.eu for Europe. Now, as I said, you can download it and you can use it in New York. It's already being used in New York. You, you log in the precise nature of the incident if you're attacked, the date and the location, and it appears on a map, and people can read up about problem areas and things like that, and uh, that's, a, I think, a great idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't completely solve the problem, but it lets you know about patterns. Uh, there's another disturbing report. A Marine recruit wrote an anonymous uh, public essay uh, saying that in the Marines, in basic training, he was called faggot 10 to 50 times a day by drill instructors, that this is just part of the culture, even with the disappearance of the don't ask, don't tell uh, uh, rules. And, you know, some deny this, some reinforce it. Uh, uh, Defense Secretary Hagel at West Point in his graduation speech talked about how having out lesbian and gay members of the military makes the military stronger. But clearly... Did he get a, was that an applause line? <laughs> I'm just I don't think asking. they threw their hats in the air. I don't know. Uh, but what I think I know is that this is the culture on the ground often, not everywhere I'm sure, but uh, that you don't root this out overnight by passing a law, that uh, the culture has to be changed. It has to be changed for these well, kids who are going and beating people up on the street, it has to be, and shooting them dead, and it has to be changed in every uh, corner of society. Well, when President Truman signed an executive order to end racial segregation in the military, uh, it took a long time for the military to get comfortable with that. They, yes. they, 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 I had a friend who was there in the Vietnam era and he couldn't, 
he kept counting the number of times he was called the N-word all the time yeah. uh, in the military. And, <laughs> you know, if they're calling them faggot, you, you think, of, think about how many times in, the, in these situations they're calling them ladies and girls yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff to the men. Exactly. I'm, I'm talking about. Look, it happens on the golf course. I have to yell at men on the golf course to say, you, you, call, you hit a bad shot and you call yourself a, a girl. Right. Right. Uh, excuse me, you're the one who hit the bad shot, not me. Yes. <laughs> I hit a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as we keep bringing up these golf analogies, let's get to our sports news. Huh? Oh, okay, that's a All good right. idea. Robbie Rogers. Uh, this was a, a, a guy who had played uh, uh, professional soccer, uh, retired. And then at 26, because he thought he could not continue to play uh, and be out. And so he waited, he retired and then came out. And then he said, uh, he retired in February, and he's to, he said to uh, discover myself. And I realized I could only truly enjoy life once I was honest. So he's now uh, playing for the LA Galaxy. Yes. But here's what happened. He, he retired in February. He came out. People said, oh, Robbie, you know, you were really good. He, he was not a second stringer. Got he a was, picture of him? Let's yeah. put a picture of him up there. Uh, and, and you really well, should Robbie come Rogers, back and play. Robbie the soccer player. So then he goes There he is, to, in the white. Yeah, he goes to a Nike event in Portland, and he speaks. Nike is running an event called uh, the Be True LGBT Youth Forum in April. And brings him in as a speaker to these kids, 500 kids. And Robbie stands up and he says, uh, and, and speaks to them and says afterwards, I seriously felt like a coward. These kids are standing up for themselves and changing the world. I have a platform and a voice to be a role model. How much of a coward was I not to step up to the plate? And so he decided... He was going to try to go back into Major League Soccer. If we would all take that, those words to heart, yeah. that we need to speak up. That's what it's all about. So he stands up and he takes the field. Now, this is the first out gay man. Lots of women have come out in professional sports. Yes, including play, soccer. Yes, to play a major professional sport. We're calling it a major sport now. It's not one of the big four, <laughs> but we're calling it a major sport now, soccer. Uh, uh, for the galaxies, uh, and he gets a standing ovation when he hits the field, which was quite moving. Um, and they, and he also got a four nothing win over the Seattle yeah. Sounders. He played the second half. He wants to. He's played for the uh, U.S. national team before. He wants to make that team again so he can play in the World Cup, which would be huge. And he now says it's awesome to be part of a movement that's changing our society. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. It and absolutely soon, is. Soon we won't have any more sports stars to announce, but we have one more this week. And that's an Olymp we got a picture of him, Olympic swimmer Amini Fanua, F O N U A. He's with the Texas Aggies. Uh, he was an he, NCAA All American. He's a Tongan, and he played for the Tongan Olympic team swimming. Yes. Well, he's Tongan, but he came out in the student newspaper at the Aggies. Now you remember we reported on the Texas A and M. Yeah. A and M. Yeah. We reported on them earlier in the year because they were going to pass this very anti-gay policy there, defunding the LGBT group there. Right. They did pass it, but it was vetoed by the head of the student council. Yes. So uh, student senator. Whatever, now yeah. th the thing about this is, is that uh, Amini here uh, had not says he had not personally experienced homophobia there, but he wanted to encourage other gay students to come to the school who might be discouraged by the controversy. He did it to help the school. He thought the school was getting a bad rap with the earlier controversy, and he wanted to let people know that, it, in fact, it was a welcoming school. It's actually the alma mater of my girlfriend. How about that? I don't think she was out there then, uh, but uh, it... It, he did it as a school spirit kind of thing and to say, look, I've had a good time here and I have been out to my friends and fellow students and on the swim team and the coach and everybody else. I've been completely out. I haven't, you know, been a, a public figure, but here I am. And so that was nice. Yes. All right. Uh, maybe not so nice will be the open forum in San Francisco this Friday night. <laughs> you may be seen this before. At after. the MCC Church. The San Francisco Pride Board of Directors is holding a somewhat delayed uh, open forum for the public to discuss 
the uh, short-lived election of Bradley Manning as one of their grand marshals. Elected by the Electoral College of past grand marshals. <laughs> yeah, well, in their statement of this upcoming meeting, they say they recognize and regret the recent error in the announcement of Mr. Bradley Manning as Mr. Bradley Manning. They're not even giving him his it's rank proper. anymore. He hasn't yeah. been court-martialed yet. Yeah, that starts next week. On June, yeah, on June uh, 3rd, I think. Yeah, uh, but a lot a big of people... There's a big demonstration for Bradley Manning down at Fort Meade on Saturday, June the 1st. Yes, and uh, a lot of people turning out in Bradley Manning contingents in pride parades around the country. So anyway, San Francisco is going to have this big public but, forum, and I can't wait to see well, what Well, but again, there. to review, you know, they're saying, well, he couldn't have been elected because he's not from San Francisco. We only elect people from San Please. Francisco, which is a lie. Please. And, uh, and the, uh, but the, the people from the Electoral College are saying, hey, the staff doesn't get to overrule our decisions. Exactly. And that's what they're fighting here. And, right. and if uh, Daniel Ellsberg will show up to uh, stand in for him, Man. I would think you'd be uh, appreciative you should of that. Be, you should be. Well, down the coast in California, in Long Beach, uh, they have opened uh, Harvey Milk Promenade Plaza, evidently the first public space like this. Well, uh, there, is the, there is Harvey Milk Plaza in San Francisco, of course, okay. where the flag is. Maybe the first in San Diego. Long Beach. Long Beach, sorry. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, they've opened so, it and everyone was happy. Okay. Uh, I have been corresponding with Alan Young, a longtime gay activist, author with Carla J. of The Gay Report, a groundbreaking book many years ago. Yeah. And, Early 70s. Yes. And he tells me that in New York on June 29th, they're having a reunion of the Gay Liberation Front members. Before my time. Uh, they lasted about two years, but they were the big group right after Stonewall. And and uh, they were in the original uh, march, the Christopher, Christopher Street Liberation Day march. That's what it was called for many years. In 1970. And so they're going to have a contingent in the Pride March this year uh, commemorating that on uh, June 30th. So if you, in fact, are one of those GLF veterans and want more information about the reunion and the uh, contingent, email me and I will put you in touch with Alan or get information from him. You can reach me about that or anything else at annnorth at earthlink.net. So uh, GLF members, hope to hear from you. Let's go over to Arizona. You remember Daniel Hernandez, the hero in the Gabby oh, yeah. Gifford shooting? Sure. He was a staffer for her. Uh, well, he was supposed to be the graduation speaker at Yuma Catholic High School, and a parent objected to him giving the graduation address. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, but the, they're saying that the local archbishop actually intervened to keep him there in this yes, thing. Yes, yes. Uh, so overruling Stunning. the school authorities. Now, this parent of the uh, pulled her daughter out of the graduation ceremony. I just want to say something to you. You're <laughs> going to have to follow her around the rest of her life. She ain't going to be able to go to a Broadway show because these are made by homosexuals for the most part. Uh, not all, not entirely. There are some good non-gay people working in the theater. But if, if that's what your concern is, her being around somebody who's, oh, God, it's just too much. It's not just about Broadway. No, I know. <laughs> Lots of things. Uh... Uh, we should note that this is the beginning of Pride Month uh, now on June 1st. Tons of stuff going on. Look in your local area for what's happening. I just got tons of pieces of mail from Brooklyn from Borough President Marty Markowitz about... Uh, an LGBT flag raising ceremony, a pride celebration, uh, uh, showing at the Brooklyn Museum of the Boys in the Band film with actor Larry Luckinbill there for a Q&A and he many was events. The, he played the, uh, well, he was one of the non-gay people in the cast. Uh, and but, you uh, might also and, want to take a look at the current issue of New York Magazine where uh, journalist Frank Rich you may know him as having been the op-ed columnist in the New York Times for many years. And Broadway critic. Yes. Writes about someone he describes as uh, his... Uh, surrogate parent. Yes, I'm looking for... And the mentor. Exit. Yes, surrogate parent, a guy named Clayton Coots, a uh, closeted gay man. And it took uh, Frank Rich many years to find out he was gay. He just knew him as someone who was working in the theater, who he admired, who he struck up a friendship with when he, Frank, was a 17-year-old high school senior. 
Uh, well, but, he wanted, but he's talking about lost gay history. Well, he, the title of the piece is Ancient Gay History, and the point of the article is it's not so ancient. It yeah. just happened a couple of weeks ago, basically. Yes. Uh, the, what we call ancient gay history. Yes, and that, uh, and that because people were closeted, a lot of what happened is unknown. And I, frankly, I was a little astonished at his naivete, but I guess if it doesn't occur to you, then uh, well, it doesn't. Well, it says that, it, you know, that he was going to go stay in Chicago and that where this, where this guy lived, he was going to, and wherever he was going to stay fell through and he wanted to stay with him. And his parents actually wanted to check him out and make sure he wasn't homosexual. So they checked him out with another closeted homosexual <laughs> who concealed the fact that this guy was a closeted homosexual. Uh, it's a great piece. It's a very interesting piece. Very interesting. Yeah. All right. Shall we move on to international news? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of stuff going on in Russia and nearby in the last week. In the uh, former Soviet Republic. Yes. Uh, mostly because of challenges to uh, governments trying to stop pride marches or, or activists trying to uh, construct them. Well, let's give them the bad news first. Well, we have some video footage from Moscow where activists did try to stage a pride march. They've tried to do this for many years, yes. and you know, the, this is a. Uh, it's uh, always a Nikolai Alexeyev is the leader there. Yeah. Uh, so he was in hiding before the march so that he wouldn't be arrested before it started. But look at this. Oh. They, people just move, and the cameras love to take pictures well, of people getting beat up. Now we're fast forwarding. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll get to it. But what, what you see is all these individual people. Uh, trying to be out, uh, pulling stuff out of their bags, flags, signs, whatever, and the cops just swoop in and grab each of them in turn. Well, that, very happened, to, that happened to me in New York when I tried to pull out a protest sign against the Pope in 1979. It it's was, not it was, 1979, it is, it's 2013. Oh, in, in Russia, I would say it's more like 1917. Well, that's what are you what talking I, about? That's what I'm saying yeah. is that today, as we celebrate all our victories, these people, these brave, courageous people are showing up knowing they're going to get attacked by the cops and not in ways that we used to get arrested here, which were fairly benign, but uh, really getting roughed up and hauled off and being treated uh, terribly. Yes. Well, I can remember, well, I also can remember here at the, uh, the, one of, at the Matthew Shepard demonstration after he died, yes. police trampling people yes, here. Yes, but that was 20 years ago. 25 right. years ago. All right. Well, it's bad there. It's got the point is attitudes in Russia have gotten worse. And um, I, I have a statement by uh, what's his name um, uh, Nikolai. I mean, he he said he said that you know this is Putin basically trying to throw off you know political trouble and blame everything on us and scapegoat us and all that kind of stuff and he blames him for the anti-gay violence uh, that's we've taking had Nikolai Alexeyev a uh, great Russian gay activist leader on this show and uh, here are a couple of pictures of him and what happened to him at this moment getting punched this getting... is an action shot of him getting punched in the face he says he's all right but I mean it's 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 brutal these people feel that they can just physically assault people yeah. over over just being gay and being out on the street and it's a lot of it is inspired by the Russian Orthodox Church absolutely all right so that's the video and and, and still Nikolai from... trying to move his way through the crowd yeah. and talk to me. okay enough of that enough of Moscow uh, let us move on well to... better news in Ky uh, Kiev yeah. Yes. Uh, we're about a hundred. This is in the Ukraine. About a hundred activists defied a court order and marched on May 25th. The riot police protected them from counter demonstrators. Well, they had a hundred people marching. Three hundred cops came out to protect them. Uh, then there were the disruptive uh, uh, counter demonstrators. They were mostly the ones who were arrested. Yeah, th there were 12 arrests, and yeah. they were for trying to break it up. But the, but the organizers are calling this an historic breakthrough because it's the first time they were able to do it. They did it without a legal permit, and, and it worked. Well, you can see the uh, disruptors trying to uh, just attack them individually. Uh, 
one reason it worked is they had originally wanted to do it in the center of the city, and the government said no and moved them to the outskirts and put them in a less prominent position. That's what they did with the Pride March on Staten Island when they started it. I don't know what well, it's like Well, it's now. what they wanted to do with the gay activist events for years here. They'd say, Bloomberg would say, uh, no, you can't have Central Park. We'll give you the Upper Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> Randall's Island. You could have your demonstration Awful. on Randall's Island. Awful. Uh, it better be better under ridiculous. the new mayor, but only if we make make it so. By the way, uh, in the Queens Pride Parade, yes. uh, Queens County, New York, uh, they're going to have that out gay boxer. Tell me his name. Uh, come on. We're not going to come uh, up with it. Cruz? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be one of the uh, okay. uh, guys marching in the thing. Well, and back to Russia. In St. Petersburg, uh, two uh, LGBT and one gay-friendly organization are being prosecuted as foreign agents because <laughs> merely standing up for uh, gay rights makes you, by definition, well, they, a foreign they agent. They do have a law about groups getting money from outside the country, and they, they, they say they have to register as foreign agents. So this group is saying we won't do that because of the stigma that it implies. Aye. Then uh, staying in Eastern Europe, in Croatia, hundreds marched for same-sex marriage. But that's because the government is considering banning it in the Constitution. So that roused them and they got out. In uh, moving to a different continent, in Brazil, you remember that the, uh, the organization monitoring the courts there said you must open same-sex marriage to everybody. Well, that brought out uh, 100,000 conservatives in a March for Jesus. Well, it's their, it's their annual March for Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Well, the theme this year was to ask the Supreme Court to issue an injunction against same-sex marriage. It's in support of the traditional family, <laughs> but Jesus did not come from a traditional family, if you so read true. the story. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you our, believe it. The uh, first uh, male couple married in France legally since they passed same-sex marriage recently. Uh, but meanwhile, in Paris, there was another one of these massive hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, first I read 150,000, then I read 400,000. They really don't like us. I uh, read at 1.2 million wow. at one point. Anyway. But hundreds were arrested because it devolved into violence. Now, this is the uh, young men, the hooligans or whatever you want to call them, who are using these demonstrations as an opportunity to express their anger at uh, the bad economy, the socialist government that they don't think is doing enough to help them. And they they have no hesitation about turning these uh, confrontations with cops into very violent I mean, uh, encounters. 59 people chained themselves to fences and uh, along the Champs-Élysées. Uh, 19 were arrested for storming the headquarters of the Socialist Party to demand that President Hollande resign. So the, the, the place that the weddings got underway was Montpellier, yes. which is the San Francisco of France, according to <laughs> press reports. 350 people were arrested in total at these things, and 36 were injured, 34 of them gendarmes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just like saying those French words. Uh, moving across because the... Because they don't pronounce other things very well. Channel. A couple of stories from uh, Britain. Uh, first, a, a very brave Pakistani lesbian couple well, living in England. Well, operatively, a Muslim couple, because yep. it's the first Muslim couple that's gotten a civil partnership there. They were in Britain as students. They were on student visas. They met, fell in love, uh, and registered in Leeds as civil partners and immediately applied for asylum on the grounds that if they go back to Pakistan as a couple, they are going to be subject to uh, death. Now, I don't know whether to take the comments of the registrar in Leeds as benign or not, but the registrar said to them, uh, you know, homosexuality is against your religion, <laughs> and you ought to think about this for a couple of days before you get married. But they went through with it. <laughs> I don't think registrars should be weighing in on these topics. Well, I think it, it was an attempt to be uh, thoughtful and supportive. Uh, meanwhile, we had told you the story some weeks ago about uh, the transgender teacher, Lucy Meadows, 32, who mm -hmm. committed suicide. Now, there are all sorts of... But she of, was hounded by the press, but... Well, her, her therapist said uh, she uh, had other problems. Yes. She was evidently in debt. She, uh, uh, her parents had died. Uh, 
her uh, beloved had died, she had job stress, she left a note that blamed all those things. But the English coroner uh, issues this big statement blaming sensational and salacious press coverage for the suicide. Well, it, I think that's a little over the top. Well, it, it, it was over the top press coverage. I mean, there was some terrible yeah, but, things that were said about her. But she said... She said it was other reasons. And yes. you, that's and the that thing. And that the press coverage was but, uh, unfortunate, but yes. she was riding well, with it. But that is the thing. I mean, you know, uh, there's, there's usually something else going on in a situation yes. like that, and that's what it was in that case. Uh, interesting story from Genoa, Italy, where, uh, you remember Vladimir Luxuria, who was sure. a, the transgender member of parliament? Uh, she, it turns out, was very friendly with a very radical uh, priest in Genoa, Father uh, Andrea Gallo, who died. He was known as a Marxist and uh, the angelic anarchist. And so she was asked to give a eulogy and uh, uh, received communion at the funeral. And people are really up in arms about what, this. What, did a transsex transsexual that, receive communion? Uh, what are yes, they supposed to do? And, and gave Aren't the they eulogy. children of God, too? And this priest who died uh, said things like, the church needs an openly gay pope, and it's the repression of their sexuality that's leading to Wasn't pedophilia. Wasn't the last one gay? Anyway. Uh, yes, but not open about it. Right. Well, with those. But Genoa shoes. seems to be, a, and we can go to Genoa. We can go to Montpellier. There are there Lots are little hotbeds. There beds, are little yeah. places to go, and uh, but uh, Jamaica still remains a, a tough place. Now you know we we hear about uh, a lot about the homophobia in the in the Caribbean, but this guy Morris Tomlinson of a group called AIDS Free World, he's on a five year campaign to end homophobia there in the whole region, um, but. He made this PSA, which we've shown before, and yeah. we have time, we'll show it again? No, well, maybe not. Maybe not. But the three main TV stations there, including public television, mm -hmm. won't air his ads, even though the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica said it did not violate their standards. Uh, they won't give a reply, so he's going to go to court, and he's saying, you're violating my rights. Yeah, that a little you're, bit you're of it seeing there. it as B-roll. That's his aunt saying, I don't really understand you, but I love you anyway, which I think is a great <laughs> message okay. for uh, people, conservative uh, uh, families to get. Don't you kill know. things you don't understand. Yeah, uh, tolerance do and respect and love. That's true. Uh, but uh, don't expect that from the president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, uh, starting his third term. He used to be for us, but now he's siding with the right wing, uh, blasting us. Uh, well, he's blasting. He says he won't allow same-sex marriage or adoption yeah. or gender identity laws, yeah. but he has passed some other laws. Yeah, I, I ain't defending him. Okay, uh, on to AIDS and other health news. Okay. Uh, UN put out a report this week uh, uh, tracking the, their experience with AIDS in Africa over the last seven years. Uh, 2005, there were one million people on AIDS medications. Now, seven years later in 2012, 7.1 million. Now, this is nice, but what they leave out of the report is that in 2011, uh, there were just under 2 million new infections in one year, and wow. in that year, 1.2 million died. The, the point is, there are, they've come a long way, but they have a long way to go, and unless people step up and take this as a priority and something to be done, uh, a lot more people and are going to die. infections are going up in the United States as well, but not at that, that level, of course. Yeah. Tyler Perry, well, the, you know, the Positive Women's uh, Network. Closet case, that's Tyler yes. Perry. The Positive Women's Network is calling him out for stigmatizing people with HIV in his film, Temptation, uh, saying he is depicting PWAs as untouchable and unlovable and doomed to a lifestyle of loneliness. Uh, it implies that men with HIV are sexually predatory, and there's a big scene of a lonely woman with HIV, and it sends the message that HIV is a punishment for immoral behavior. Terrible. And they want him to sit down with them and talk about it. He's that a very influential nice. person. He certainly is. And uh, again, when you're, I haven't seen the movie though, when you're a closeted gay man, uh, you end up doing stupid stuff like that. Okay. I, I don't want to make that a blanket statement because we're going to talk about Liberace in a minute. Yeah, uh, and I just want to remind you or tell you more about this uh, ACT UP uh, alumni event uh, gathering on June 22nd, 6.30 to 11 p.m. at 49 Grove Street, the restaurant here in New York. If you want information about this, because it's going to be a lot of fun and interesting, 
uh, you can go to the website, actupnyalumni, with an I, dot org, A-C-T-U-P-N-Y-A-L-U-M-N-I dot org, and get all the information about that. Uh, and thank you to the New York Times, which did a very nice feature piece on ACT UP veteran James Wensey, uh, who has been the... the Documenter yeah. of everything with film. Yeah, but has been forced out of his uh, basement apartment. and uh, Because the owner is leaving town and yeah. selling the whole place, and he, he can't stay anymore. Uh, no, and he Unless did all this... Unless someone steps forward. Well, he did all this work for nothing. Yep. Nothing, as everyone in ACT UP did, and it's just a yep. shame to see people uh, yes. not have resources. Uh, I also want to uh, say that there's an, a study out of Australia of uh, transgender women uh, that shows genetic differences uh, between transgender people and uh, non-transgender people, actual genetic differences, All which right. is uh, the start of proving that it's not just... Okay. You know, craziness. Entertainment news. I have yeah. a couple of shows to tell you about. Go. Uh, Gay Fest got started w with uh, Gerald McCulloch and Moonlight and Love Songs. It's a very provocative look at an intergenerational relationship. That's all I'm going to say about that. And it has an especially good second act. But in the first act, I was a bit distracted by the uproarious laughter coming from the playwright himself and his guest. <laughs> they couldn't stop laughing at their own jokes. And it was a little distracting. Uh, that's the perils of attending on an opening night. We I, laugh at our own jokes, oh, too. Oh, well. <laughs> I had my first experience with uh, Brex, the Caucasian chalk circle. I didn't even know what it was about. At the Classic Stage Company, which is my favorite theater in New York. But Christopher Lloyd, there's a picture of him there, you know, from Back to the Future and everything. He was really hard to understand, and his role in the first act was the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his voice and he's on my head and I'm quite a lot Thank well, you, I don't that's have any, Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> and Mary Testa's in it too, and I like her a lot, but she did a lot of mugging. Uh, but she's going to be replaced by Leah Delaria on June 11th. Woo. And finally, at the Brits Off-Broadway series at 59 East 59th, a really challenging entry, Buttalock O'Clock, about an abstract artist named Roger Hilton from Britain. It's sort of a Bakettian rumination on art and life, written and directed by Eddie Elks to June 9th. All right, in, in one minute, I'm going to go through this. Next week, June 3rd, ABC Family Network starts airing a new show about lesbians produced by Jennifer Lopez. Might want to check that out. It's called The Fosters. Uh, Cannes Film Festival gave its top prize, the Palme d'Or, to Blue is the Warmest Color. Lesbian sex movie. Young Lesbians Coming of Age by a French-Tunisian director. And even though Tunisia is completely against <laughs> gay people, the president or whatever said, oh, we're so proud of this director. <laughs> very amusing. And I loved Behind the Candelabra. I think it was very well made by, uh, this is Soderbergh's last film. Yep. And Michael so Douglas, says. Matt Damon, I mean, Rob Lowe, a lot of cameos by some famous people. <laughs> what I loved about it was that Michael Douglas played Liberace as a guy with self-confidence. Even <laughs> if he was closeted, he was self-confident. I don't and know I if I'd recommend great. it as anybody's introduction to homosexuality. Yeah, well, here's what I would also not recommend is the new Gatsby movie. Oh, great Gatsby. Terrible. I haven't seen it. I've been Empty. Re I've resisted Stupid. it. Okay. Stick with the book. Yes. Uh, see you next week. Bye.